most people before they start to recover are really committed to finding something outside of themselves to fix the problem. I was guilty of this when I went through chronic fatigue syndrome. Almost every single person who enrolls in our program is guilty of it before they start their recovery program. They are very, very committed, but on the wrong things. The system has let them down. The system says when you get sick, you go to the doctor, you take a pill and you get better. With chronic illness, recovery, it doesn't work like that. And that's a really disempowering way to approach recovery because ultimately at the end of the day, if you're doing that, you're not entirely in control. In today's conversation, we are talking about what it takes to recover from chronic fatigue syndrome. If you're new here, my name is Toby Morrison. I am the host and founder of the CFS Health Recovery Program and the CFS Health Recovery Podcast. And so we're going to dive right into it. What does it take to recover from chronic fatigue syndrome? About five days ago, I was on a boat and we get to watch the sunset and there's a DJ and there's music and there's people dancing and drinking and having fun. And I was out with some friends showing them around this area. So beautiful. You can imagine the sunsets going down. There's like really chill house music playing in the background. Really lovely people on the boat. There's probably about 40 to 50 people on this boat. Maybe more, maybe like 70, 80. And that's just a really good vibe. And if you know me, I love the ocean and I love nature. And so here I am on this boat and I'm dancing and we're having fun. And this person comes up from behind me and says, are you Toby? And I thought, yeah, what does this person want from me? And he goes, Toby Morrison. And I said, that's it. That's who you're talking to. He took a step back and he looked up to me and he said, you saved my life. He said, I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm seeing you right now. You literally saved my life. You know, I don't want to interrupt your evening, but he said, I just had to come up to you and just say, thank you so much. You saved my life. And I said, how so? And he said, in 2016, I enrolled in your online recovery program. And before I did that, I was told that I was never going to get better. I saw doctor after doctor and was told that I was never going to get better, that I was making it up. He said it was so hard. My family thought I was making it up. They thought that I was like going crazy and making this all up in my head. And you were the first person when I finally found your videos online that it actually changed my life. And when I joined the program, I started doing the work and implementing the tools. And he said it took him about a year and a half to recover and get his life back. And here's this man standing there on the boat, dancing, drinking with his wife and his friends he was hosting in this destination. And it was just so surreal because, you know, this person actually lived in Hong Kong when he joined the program. And I vividly remember him because he's got a unique name. And I said, I remember you. I said, you were in Asia somewhere or China. And he said, yes, that's right, Hong Kong. And he was in a bad way. He never thought he'd be able to do what he was doing the other night on the boat, how to enjoy his life with his friends and family and have a great time. And you could see tears forming in his eyes and we shared a moment, we embraced each other and I said, you know, I didn't save you, you saved yourself. Yeah, I provided the tools and the framework and the program provided you with the support, but ultimately you were the one that changed your life. And it was a really powerful moment and we took a photo, I'm not going to share the photo with you, that's private, but it was a really cool moment. And it was a cool moment for a couple of things. One, to show this person that, hey, yeah, the work that we do is fantastic and you were the one that did the work for yourself to get the results that you got and now you are living your life. He runs a production company, travels the world, like I said, was having a great time on the boat the other night and he even said, look at my life now, it's amazing. And so I want to talk to you about what it takes to recover because this sparked a conversation and the conversation is, What did he do to recover? Why did he recover? And there's a common theme when we look at people who get better of what they do. It's never something magical. It's never something overnight. In fact, there's a pattern. And if you literally study every single success story, you will see a really common theme amongst people who recover. And it's fascinating because, you know, I've been doing this work for well over a decade now and we see it all the time. And so 
You know, the reason why I shared that story with you is because it's a lead way into this conversation about the person doing the work. So what does it take to recover? It takes a certain amount of commitment. First and foremost, it takes a certain amount of commitment. A commitment that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get well. Now here's the kicker. Most people, before they start to recover, are really committed to finding something outside of themselves to fix the problem. I was guilty of this when I went through chronic fatigue syndrome. Almost every single person who enrolls in our program is guilty of it before they start their recovery program. They are very, very committed, but on the wrong things. And it's not their fault. The system has let them down. The system says when you get sick, you go to the doctor, you take a pill and you get better. With chronic illness, recovery, it doesn't work like that. It requires an inner commitment within yourself. A lot of people have a lot of doubt and they go, oh my God, but what if this doesn't work either? And I said, what have you tried before? And everything they state is outside of themselves. There's still an inkling of hoping that something outside of themselves is going to fix them. And that's a really disempowering way to approach recovery because ultimately at the end of the day, if you're doing that, you're not entirely in control. Now, this is not to say that outside help is not important. This is not to say that outside help isn't necessary. It can be absolutely necessary for recovery. If it helps 5 or 10%, it is worth doing. However, if your focus is that 5 or 10% is going to fix your problem like a magic bullet or an overnight cure, you're going to feel really disappointed and really upset. This man on the boat went through this process himself and it was excruciating. But what happened when he joined the program, there was a commitment and there was a commitment and a desire within himself that he was going to do whatever it took to help himself get better. Now, of course, he leaned on support, he got help and he did the work. And so there's a common theme and it might be really hard and challenging for you right now to hear this because you can't see it. You can't see the reality of what it could be if you made this commitment to yourself. If you fully committed to yourself for the 24 hours that you have control of every single day, what you do in those 24 hours. The reason why CFS Health started is because when I was going through chronic fatigue syndrome, it was ridiculously, excruciatingly painful. Not just physically, mentally and emotionally, but more so the fact that there was no practical help. How ridiculous was it to go and see a doctor for 30 minutes, for some people, lucky if they get 15 minutes, and to expect anything practical to come out of that session, that you have a plan in your hands to go home and implement every single day. And so the pain and suffering that I went through and that my family went through, that when I got better eventually, I was going to make sure that no one else had to go through that alone, that they didn't have to suffer on their own and they didn't have to have this ludicrous, impractical advice that couldn't actually tangibly help them. And that's why CFS Health started, because that's what I needed and I wish I had. And so I created CFS Health on the backbone of making sure that no one else had to go through what I went through. No one else's parents, like my parents, had to go through what I did. Like it was hell, hell on earth. And one of the biggest keys is practicality. What can you control in your 24 hours? The quality of your sleep, your nutrition, your gut health, your restorative movement, your baseline, what you should and shouldn't be doing. Are you redlining? Are you pushing way beyond your capacity and burning credits that you don't have, keeping you in debt even more and more? Or are you nurturing and nourishing yourself and doing the right appropriate amount that's going to build your capacity over time, improve your immune system, improve your sleep, and then help you move forwards. We talk about progressing a lot. You know, are you doing the right things at the right time? We talk about mindset a lot. You can control a lot of these things with the right tools and support and coaching and frameworks. And here's the thing. This guy was literally diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome in a foreign country that he wasn't born in. And he literally was at his wits end, thought his life was over. Diagnosed with ME, chronic fatigue syndrome. Thought his life was over. And now it's not. Was it a fluke? Absolutely not. And he said to me on the boat the other day, he goes, it took me a while. Like it didn't happen overnight. And I said, 
how long's a while? And he said, a year and a half. I said, a year and a half's nothing. That's a very short period of time, if you ask me. I think that's a really short period of time. So what happened over that year and a half? It was a dedicated commitment every single day to doing what was necessary and required. Sometimes you have to do stuff that you don't want to do, but you need to do it. And you have to understand that. Everything comes at a cost. One of my favorite quotes for people going through this is, recovery is hard, but not recovering is harder. Recovery is hard, but not recovering is harder. And some people would disagree with that. I know for a fact that some people in our program that go through it, they get to this point where they go, oh my God, I'm scared to get better because then I have to live life and take responsibility. I have to deal with people and jobs and it's safer to stay at home and be sick. Now, they're not choosing that on purpose, but it's a secondary gain that they weren't once aware of. And we need to work through those doubts and fears if they want to overcome it. But that leads me to my second point. You must have a desire and want to get towards a life that you want, to move towards a life that you want. And this is a common theme that isn't talked about enough. And again, I am not saying this is in your head. I am not saying this at all. However, your mindset has a direct reflection into the behaviors and actions that you make and take every single day. Now, for someone who gives up and goes, there's nothing for me, there's no point, I can't get better, their behavior and their actions is going to go towards things that aren't going to help them move forwards and get healthy. And so this is a huge talking point. Your desire and your vision for your future really matters. This might be the missing piece for you right now, especially you're doing all the right things and you're moving forwards and you're doing all the practical things and you're just not making progress. What are you moving towards? Why are you doing all this stuff? Because some of it sucks. Recovery is hard. Like some days are not easy, right? But a desire or a vision that's going to move you towards something that you want that's better and greater than your current circumstances is going to help you rise. It's going to help you rise to do the daily actions and the daily behaviors that you need to create, whether that's with your nutrition, whether it's with your immune system, whether it's with your circadian rhythm, whether it's with your movement, restoring energy, reconditioning your body, whatever it is. If your goals and vision and dreams are not bigger than your current circumstances, you're going to stay in your current circumstances. So what does it require? It requires you to have a bigger vision than your current problem that's going to help you pull you and move you towards where you want to go. Notice that I mentioned the word pull, not push. You do not need to push towards your goals. You don't need more friction, right? You want to be pulled. And that's why I said vision and goals and dreams is because it can pull you and actually help you expand your energy. A perfect example is this man on the boat. And there's thousands of stories. I'm just telling you this one because it literally happened this week. And again, there was a vision. There was a reason. He had a why. A why behind the what. When you're just doing shit for the sake of doing shit, it gets really mundane and it's like, what am I doing this for? You're just moving through the motions. And we all go through that. We're human beings and we need to go through that to help us get back on track and show us where we maybe need to move things, change things and implement different things to move us towards where we want to go. My third piece is doing the boring work. One of the things that we say inside the program is hit the singles every single day. In baseball is an analogy of hitting a home run. And most people are trying to hit home runs on their own by finding the next quick thing, the next pill that's going to fix them, the next person that's going to fix them, the next potion. It doesn't matter how good a freaking supplement you take or how good a diet you have. If you're still not doing the singles every single day, the things that are really important, MITs, most important things, that help move the needle the most over a period of time, little by little becomes a lot, it won't matter what you do. It's not what you do necessarily, it's how you go about it. And so we're a huge believer in hitting singles over home runs because the more daily consistency you have by hitting the singles, meaning a single hit and you run to the first base, another single hit, you run to the second base and you keep going around. You'll run home runs eventually. It'll add up over time. And so little by little becomes a lot. So important. Lastly, 
obviously I can't give you 25 hours worth of content in a podcast episode. So I'm not gonna tell you what you have to do actually day to day to get there. We have a bunch of information. We have so many free trainings. You can go and explore that. Of course, you can apply for our program and you can enroll in that if you want proper hands-on help. But the last thing I wanna leave you with is what a coach once said to me, and this hit me hard. At the time, I was struggling and I thought I was doing everything. I kept saying, I'm doing everything, I'm doing everything. Nothing's working. And the coach said to me, well, I just want to ask you a question. I said, what's that? He said, how committed are you? And I took offense. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, like out of scale of one to 10, how committed are you? And I said, oh, like a 10. And I remember getting off the phone and I remember sitting there like, really pissed off that this coach was questioning my commitment. Little did I realize he was right. I wasn't fully committed. I was a 6 out of 10. Maybe even a 5. I was lying to myself. I thought I was a 10. I kept telling everyone I was a 10 in terms of commitment. But I was really a 6. I was half asking it. I had one foot in the door and one foot out the door. I had my hands in multiple pies. I wasn't really fully committed. And so my last thing for you is you have to have both feet in. You can't have one foot in and one foot out or hands on the steering wheel looking forwards but then looking in the rear view mirror, looking in the past and getting stuck and going nowhere. You have to have two feet in. You have to have your eyes facing forwards and moving towards where you want to go. But one of the biggest things of why you're going around in circles is because you're not two foot in. You keep going and watching a million different things and trying a million different things and you wonder why you're not getting anywhere. You have to stop searching for these home runs and these quick fixes and just be fully committed. And so my question to you is, how committed actually are you? Fully, not for a day, not for a week, but for the entirety of what you need to be committed to to get the result that you want. Because we know that nothing great happens overnight. Recovery does not happen overnight. It happens over weeks, months, and for some, years. If they've got a backlog of other things, they just need to focus on hitting the singles every single day. And here's the thing. People who recover do not focus on how long it takes to recover. They just get on with it and they start getting better. They focus on what they can do today and what they can tr control. They let go of the rest. Just spoke to a client recently doing really well. And she said, you know, Toby, something's clicked. And I said, what's that? And she said... I finally don't need to know all the answers of life right now and I can be okay with uncertainty and it is so freeing that I can be like that now because now I can live my life. I can wake up each day not feeling the burden or the weight of having to believe that I have to know every single answer right now for everything and so my last thing for you is that you don't need to know the answer for the next thing in one year. You just need to know the next step answer. And then you need to go and apply that and implement it. And here's the crazy part. Information doesn't mean jack shit unless you implement it. And this is why we're a huge believer inside our program that you don't need to watch every single video or training inside the program to get better. We just need you to focus on your next right step, which is what we help you with and give you. And then you need to follow through on that plan. And then something else will come up and we'll go, okay, cool, let's change it. Let's focus on this. Here's your next step, do this, implement it, get that result, and then we'll focus on the next step. You do not need to know all the answers right now. People who recover don't do that. They don't do that. That would keep them stuck for a hell of a lot longer. This is why kids seem to do really well quite rapidly is because their brains aren't wired to feel like they have to have heats of certainty. They're not even thinking about that. They're just thinking about their friends and what they want to be doing. And then they don't even question what they have to do. They just do it. So there's no like toing and throwing and self-sabotaging between is this right? Is this wrong? It's just like they just commit to it and they do it because they're told to do it. And I'm a huge believer that that's one of the reasons why kids seem to recover faster that's not to say adults can't too. We've seen it time and time before. We had one lady who was in her 60s who was diagnosed with ME-CFS in London. Within a year and a half, got her life back after suffering for 20 years. Really severely ill. Couldn't leave her bedroom. Was completely ill. So, you know, whether you're 60, you're 40, you're 30, you're 20, you're 8 years old or you're 80, we've got clients who are in their 80s who are doing amazing. And so the key here is to not measure time. 
let that go. Which brings me to my third last point, which is loosening the grip. All the people that recover, they loosen the grip. No one at the end of their recovery is holding on super tight to their recovery. They're just focusing on, again, what can you do on your next step and you keep moving forwards, whether that's reconditioning your body, getting your nutrition right, getting your energy levels right, getting your circadian rhythm right, getting your mindset right, focusing on your goals, expanding and integrating back into life. That's a whole nother process. That's why inside our program, we have Lifestyle Integration 2.0, which is our next level program. As you get better, you get to integrate into that program and that helps you basically overcome and deal with life challenges that might get in the way as you expand your life beyond recovery. And it's incredible to witness, you know, all these men and women, the inner certainty that they have is just so powerful. And they went from second guessing everything feeling like there's no options, feeling lost. And like I said, just self-sabotaging, going around in circles to now, whether it's six months later, a year later, some even two years later, now they have inner certainty. They're self-led. They don't question anything. They question it in a relaxed state and go, what's going on here? What could I do to make a difference? How could I help myself? Versus, oh my God, is this right or is this wrong? I'm going to try a million different things. I'm going to have one foot in, one foot out. They're so far removed from that that they're two feet in all the way with their life and they're true to themselves now and so i'm holding up our pre-frame model which is basically the four levels of recovery readiness and they go from the red zone which is the giving up stage where you feel like there's no options you're complaining and you feel like quitting which is totally normal when you're going through chronic illness especially when there's very little practical help in the world right now we're here to change that number two we go into the hoping stage and the hoping stage is where you have a little bit of hope and you know that it might be possible to get better. You're just not quite sure how. And you're lost, you're guessing and you're self-sabotaging. Then you move into the seeking zone. And this is where you know that it's possible to get better, but you still believe that someone or something is going to fix you outside of yourself. You know, you're trying to cope. Coping strategies are good if you just want to cope with what you're going through. We don't believe in coping. We believe that you can get healthy and start living again because we see it all the time. And you're feeling consumed and you're feeling tested because you keep trying all this shit and it's not working. You're spending thousands of dollars on stuff that's not working and you're going around in circles because you're trying everything that's outside of yourself. Lastly, you move beyond seeking and settling and you go into the owning stage and that's the dark green zone. And this is where people get to as they go on their recovery journey. And this is where they realize that the body heals itself if you do the right things at the right time. And with this owning stage, there's possibility, there's a pathway, and there's progress. And with that comes inner certainty, self-led, and true you. And these are the three qualities that we hear through our members in Lifestyle Integration. You can hear it in their voice. It is just so powerful. And these are the same people that a year ago, six months ago, two years ago, in so much fear and isolation that they didn't know which way to turn, just like that man on the boat the other day. So it's totally possible to go to this owning stage. I would highly recommend checking out all our free trainings for you to support you with this. And of course, if you just want to save all that time and just get proper help from the start, we can help you every step of the way, get back into life and start living again. Just apply for the program and the team will reach out to you and send you all the information you need to know. Sending you a ton of love wherever you are in the world, wherever you're at with your recovery, just know each stage, it will get better and better as you keep learning, evolving and implementing this work. All the best for now. Speak to you soon. Hey, I hope this video was really helpful for you. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment. What was your takeaway, your insight from today's video? It's really helpful to actually write your learnings down. We seem to embed it better and it seems to help us move forwards with life. Here are three ways we can help you right now whenever you're ready. The first way is make sure you add yourself into our free information recovery group on Facebook. We'll leave a link in the description below. It's a really supportive, encouraging place. There's no negative venting. You can ask questions to other people. There's something like seven, 8,000 people in there right now. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this video, there's even more. So go over there right now. We share success stories. We share our latest free trainings that come to the public. And we always share upcoming information about upgrades inside our program. And also when we offer free 
webinars or free information nights that can further help you with your own recovery. The second way we can help you, which is one of my favorite, is through all our free trainings. We're going to leave a link in the description with our favorite free trainings that we know can help you start your recovery, whether that's through our baseline training, which will help you stop pushing and crashing, our three stages of recovery to figure out exactly where you're at and know what to do next, or my favorite, which is our guest panel workshop, which was actually exclusive for our members. It was so damn good that I actually asked them, can we share this to the public? They all said yes, all five of them. So thank you past members. They share their five recovery secrets and it's really powerful. There's tears, there's aha moments, there's real key insight and inspiration. And so whether you're a one out of 10 and you're really struggling right now, or whether you're further along in your recovery journey and you're integrating back into life, we have you covered. The third way we can help you is through our actual paid online recovery program, the mentorship recovery program. And if you are interested in getting proper help, a holistic comprehensive plan, professional coaching from the best coaches in the world, whether that's with mindset, movement, nutrition, restorative movement, reconditioning, integrating back into life, integrative medicine, baseline structure, routine, accountability, all things health and life. Feel free to apply for the program today. All you need to do is click on the form, cfshealth.com slash form, fill out the short two to three minute form application and the team will be in touch with all the details that you need to know about the program via email. So make sure you check your spam folder for all the free trainings. If you've sent through an application, please be patient. My team are real people, okay? They're not robots. So if we don't get back to you within seconds or hours, it's okay. <laughs> we will get back to you. If you don't hear from the team within two to three days, that means that it's basically gone to spam or junk and it's gone missing. So please send a follow-up email to the team at info at cfshealth.com. If you have any questions, go check it out. But I would highly recommend adding yourself into the free group right now. Go click on that link in the description. Go download all the free trainings. Honestly, the whole reason why this whole thing started is because when I went through this myself, it was so painful and so excruciating that I didn't want anyone else to have to go through it. And some of these free trainings are so damn valuable. Back then, I would have paid thousands of dollars for. We've had so many comments and emails and posts saying, oh my God, the baseline training was a game changer for me. Toby, I've been doing this now for three months and I'm feeling so much better. My symptoms are decreasing. I've got more stamina. I've got more energy. I'm able to do more things. So, you know, whether you're learning from us and consuming our content through our free format, I'm so stoked. Whether that's in our paid program, I don't really care. Either way, all I want to make sure is that you are moving forwards. You are starting to really implement this work. And that's really what it's all about. Once we implement, we make change and we start to move forwards. Sending you a ton of love. Of course, feel free to consume as much of the YouTube videos as you like. There's so many really, really great ones, new and old. Sending you a ton of love and uh, speak to you very, very soon. All the best for now.